Hi, you guys. It's Yaz. And today I want to talk about how you stand up for yourself against the narcissist, okay? We all know what a narcissist is. They feel very entitled. They have very little empathy. They can be bullies. They try to bring you down. They try to use people. They talk down to you. They try to discredit you. Okay, we know what a narcissist is, right? The thing is, you have narcissists all over the place. You have narcissists, you know, in your family. You have a narcissistic partner in the everyday world out there. You know, you, you encounter tons of narcissists no matter where you go, okay? These are people that feel entitled. These are people that have very little empathy for you. So how do you stand up against a narcissist? Okay, it's like this, you guys. Number one, You've got to respect yourself first, okay? And what does that mean by respecting yourself first? That means that you don't allow anybody to talk down to you. You don't allow anybody to devalue you, okay? And when you deal with people that do that, you disengage, okay? Or if you want, you can check them and then disengage. Now, you always have to know what type of cat you're dealing with, okay? Because some people and some narcissists can be very, very dangerous. And when you're dealing with a dangerous narc, you're dealing with a malignant narc. This is not about going toe to toe with a malignant narc, okay? Because you could be putting yourself in danger. You don't have to win, you know, the war. You just have the winning the war is walking away from somebody like that and saving yourself a lot of aggravation. But this podcast, what I really want to focus in on is this. A lot of narcissists are users. They're going to use you for something. They're going to use you for money. They could use you for sex. They could use you uh, as a come up or any any way they want to use you. But it's up to you you to set those boundaries and not allow them. So how do people always say, you know, how do you do that? First of all, you can't trust people too fast, too too soon. And you can't trust what people say to you um, initially either, because you don't know these people, all right? And people lie all the time. So, you know, when people tell you something, whether it's in your work or, you know, maybe you started dating somebody, you you have to take it with a grain of salt and say to yourself, well, this is this is what they're saying, but that doesn't necessarily mean that's the truth. And this is where people make a mistake. They think what people tell them is the truth. No, you guys, the only way you're going to know the truth is in time. You know, if it if it all adds up, what comes out of their mouth and their behaviors, then you're going to know whether you're dealing with an upright person or you're dealing with somebody who plays games. And a narcissist is all about games. A narcissist is not transparent. So when you're dealing with somebody and you're recognizing that they're not being transparent with you, okay? Let's say you caught them in a lie, all right? Let's say that they ghosted you or something like that. Let's say you texted them and they didn't get back to you or, or anything along those lines. You Now, that is your red flag. You've got to recognize the signs that God gives you. Those are your red flags. And that's where you say to yourself, uh, 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 this is a sign of disrespect. This is a sign of somebody who's not valuing me. So me as a person, I have to respect myself and and now this person goes from category A to category B, okay, which is the holding pattern, okay, <laughs> because you have to see more of their actions to see, okay, are they consistently are they consistently a liar? Do they consistently ghost you? Do they have a lot of excuses? Do they have a lot of stories? Okay. Once you start seeing that, then you step back from that and you know, you know what? I can't take this person seriously. They're all about games. And when it starts with games, it's going to end with games. You're going to deal with a lot of aggravation. You're going to deal with somebody who's going to always flip the blame on you and everything like that. Now, once you recognize that you are dealing with a narcissist, okay, now you know you're dealing with a toxic person. Now you know you're dealing with somebody who can't take accountability. Now you're dealing with somebody who doesn't have empathy or something along those lines. 
That right there tells you, you know what? I got to deal with this person with kit gloves, all right? That, what does that mean? That means that I have to watch what I say to this person. Because if you're dealing with a narcissist, they're going to try to, if you have a falling out with that person, they're going to smear you all over the place. They're going to smear you on social media. They're going to smear you to your friends and family. They're going to have a vendetta to try to take you down. But... If you, you know, if you have your antenna up and you recognize that you're dealing with a narcissist, now you know that not to tell them personal information about yourself, maybe your finances, maybe something about your family secrets, maybe about your vulnerabilities or anything. Now you know, okay, I, I got a couple of red flags here. Now I know I can't trust this person. So now I can't tell them anything that's personal business. Okay. But when you want to stand up to a narcissist that is like gaslighting you or anything like that, what you got to always remember is they're going to say whatever they're going to say. Who cares whatever they say? If it's not adding up, if it's not making sense, if it's causing confusion in your mind, ding, ding, I am dealing with a narcissist. I am dealing with somebody who gaslights me. You got to go by how you feel, you guys, okay? And this is where people get fooled because, you know, a narcissist can switch up. Sometimes a narcissist will give you half-truths. And this is to throw you off. Half the time, they'll tell you half a story that's truthful and half that isn't. And this is to make you believe them on the one, on the, you know, the false information that they give you that, oh, okay, well, you know, maybe their story is true. Okay. But if you have any kind of doubt, like I always say, you got to trust that, trust that gut. If you have any kind of doubt in what they're saying, then you know that, you're dealing with shady business, okay? Shady business. So how do you stand up for yourself? When they're sitting there and they're trying to put you down or something like that, the last thing you do is go back and forth and argue with the narcissist, okay? Because you are giving them what they want. They want to have you... The, their goal is to make you doubt yourself. Their goal is to break down your self-esteem. And this is why you don't go back and forth with them. Because when you go back and forth with them, you are entertaining them. And when you entertain somebody, you are making them important. Okay? So, you know, a lot of it has to do with yourself and recognizing who you're dealing with, what they're saying, what they're doing. And that's half the battle because a lot of people that fall victim to a narcissist, the reason they fell victim to a narcissist is because they didn't know they were dealing with a narcissist. It wasn't until later on. You know how many people sit there and they tell me on my social media, oh, if I only knew this like years ago, if we all only knew this years ago, our lives would have gone a different path, okay? But we didn't know that, okay? So the biggest thing is to recognize, educate yourself, recognize when you are dealing with somebody that is not transparent, somebody gaslights you, somebody who makes excuses and does all that. Standing up for yourself doesn't necessarily mean that you got to sit there and tell the narcissist off, okay? Standing up for yourself is is walking away, okay? And realizing that, you know what? I don't have to plea my my case to this person because this person is toxic. So no matter what I say to them is not even going to matter to them. You could be spieling out the truth. And do you think they care? No. Do you think they'll validate you? No. Okay. So then why waste your breath? Why waste your breath? You don't waste your breath. You disengage and you realize that you're dealing with a toxic person. And if you want to say something to them, you could say something to the effect of, well, that's your version of it. My version is quite different, okay? That's your way of letting them know, you know what? You're not going to sway my mind. You're not going to have me uh, change my opinion or have me self-doubt myself. This is how you stand up for yourself. And it's up to you to decide if you want to even deal with that person anymore. If you're going to, if you have to deal with the narcissist like that, then you have to deal it, deal with them kind of on a gray rock type of way. In other words, don't tell them too much. Don't get into big conversations with them. Don't go back and forth. Just be like, okay, if that's, you know, if that's what you believe, that's your, 
you know, your choice. We can agree to disagree, okay? That's you holding your ground that you are not going to be swayed. This is how you stand up to a narc, okay? Another way you stand up to a narc is that you don't have them um, try to, you know, persuade you to do something that you don't want to do, okay? They're very manipulative, right? And they love to use guilt to try to make you feel guilty. What a lot of narcissists do is they build a web. In other words, they may do little things for you or whatever to make you feel indebted to them. What they're doing is they're setting you up so that later on when they ask you for that favor, you're going to feel indebted to do what they're asking you to do, okay? Because they might have done little things for you here or there, all right? You are not indebted to do that, okay? If they want to do that, that's on them. But you should not break your own boundaries because when you break your own boundaries, guess what you're doing? You're disrespecting yourself. Not only are you disrespecting yourself, now the narcissist knows that you're weak, Okay. Once a narcissist knows that you're weak, that you're always giving in to the narcissist's demands, the narcissist gets, it's like fueling a fire. They get stronger and stronger and stronger. The more the narcissist is able to break your boundaries, the more the narcissist is going to run with it. And they're going to have very little respect for you. Okay, then then the abuse really starts. And this happens to a lot of people, a lot of married people that get involved in relationships like this, that try to hold the relationship together and they give in to certain things or, you know, people stay out all night. People don't text back. Um, people talk to them in a very uh, abusive manner and stuff like that. And they let it go and they sit there and they argue and they say, well, you know, if you ever do that again, ever talk to me like that again, and the narcissist still talks to them in a very disrespectful manner. But the point is, you're still there. You're still there. So the narcissist knows that, okay, I could talk to you any which way. What are you going to do? You're going to sit there and maybe bitch and moan, but you know what? I'm still doing what I want. Who cares if you bitch and moan? Okay. You, that is not standing up for yourself. Standing up for yourself is, is having that boundary in place and having consequences to the boundary. This is where a lot of people, there's no consequences to people breaking boundaries. So they run with it. They run with it because they know that you're there and they know there's no consequence to what they do. So we always talk about boundaries and how crucial boundaries are, you guys. You have to know yourself what you will accept and what you won't accept, okay? And you can't be codependent on the narcissist. This is another problem. So many people are codependent on having the narcissist in their life. Now, some people are in certain situations where they have children and they've got to deal with the narcissist and everything like that. Like I've said in prior podcasts, when you when you have children with the narcissist, you only deal with what's in the best interest for the children, okay? What is the best interest for the children? You don't go back and forth with the narcissist because you're, all you're going to do is give yourself a headache, all right? And it's also going to upset the kids. But when you're in a relationship uh, or you have to deal with a narcissist or something along those lines... You have to, you know, you've got to set those boundaries in place so that that narcissist, the the cycle of abuse doesn't get worse, okay? And you've got to say to yourself, you know what? I've got to be prepared to to pack up and leave if I can't deal with this because you have a choice. Your choice is, is to either let the narcissist break your boundaries, okay? In which case, you're not going to be unhappy and the abuse is going to get worse and worse. Or you're going to say to yourself, okay, I'm putting this boundary up. I'm letting them know, you know, give them one pass. And if they keep doing it after that, I, I have to walk away and I have to walk away, but I have to also know that I could stand alone. This is so important, you guys. As, the older you get, the more you're going to realize that sometimes in the end, you is all you got. Believe me when I tell you, all right? Because I have gone through that. I have been in an ER three times this month with my kid, all right? And believe me, a lot of the narcissists in my life were not there, all right? So in the end, I was, you know, in the end, you is all you got, all right? And you do what you have to do as a warrior, and especially if you have a child involved 
and you love your child and you do everything for your child, okay? That's why I'm saying you got to be able to stand on your own. When you're able to stand on you, your own, you are a powerful person, okay? There is nobody that could take you down. And if you deal with people that have been through things, okay, some people have really been through trauma and tough things in their life, all right? And they know what it is to be down. If you're somebody who's been like that, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And a lot of these people that have been through things are at a point where they're like, you know what? Nobody's going to talk to me that way. Nobody's going to disrespect me. Nobody's going to put me in a position of abuse or anything like that. Why? Because I've already been down. I know what it is. And I know that I could stand alone and I'll never take that from anybody again. And this is where you've got to be at in your life. You've got to be at a position where you could say, you know what? Today or tomorrow, this person is not in my life. I'm going to be okay. I'm going to be okay because I'm working on me. I'm working on taking care of myself financially. I'm working on my health. I'm wor- working on taking care of my kids. I'm working working on, you know, where I live, make it a better place. And I'm filling my life with my friends and other people to fulfill my life that today or tomorrow, the narcissists that you're dealing with, they lose control Why do they lose control? Because you become more independent, okay? This is why a narcissist tries to isolate you, and especially malignant narcissists, all right? The really abusive narcissists that really want to, you know, they could be very violent and try to hurt you. The first thing they're going to do is they're going to isolate you. In other words, they're going to tell you they don't like your friends and family. They're going to try to have it where you don't have a relationship with anybody. Why? Because now you're at that narcissist mercy. You're codependent on the narcissist, all right? You don't have the backup friends, family, community to, you know, back you up and everything like that. This is why I'm telling you to stand up to a narcissist. You have to be independent, independent. All right. You got to be independent and be able to say, you know what? I don't need you in my life. I'm okay. I don't need you in my life. I'm going to be okay. And this is also how you respect yourself because by doing that, You will never allow somebody to treat you a certain way. You will never allow somebody to disrespect you, devalue you, put you down, call you sensitive or crazy or something like that. When somebody does something like that, they call you crazy. Oh, you're crazy. You're sensitive or something like that. You've got, you got to check that person right away and be like, you know what? Don't ever talk to me like that again. Don't ever talk to me like that again. You're not going to sit here and disrespect me, all right? You got to let them know, you guys, because if you don't let them know, they'll continue to do it, and then they're going to think like you're a dope that's going to allow that. Then they know like, okay, oh, you know, I said that to her and she didn't say nothing or she laughed it off, so it's okay that I can, you know, talk to her in a disrespectful manner or, you know, you know, devalue her, her mental state or something like that. No, the minute that somebody disrespects you, you let them know, but you don't yell and scream or anything like that. You're just stern about it and just be like, listen, I don't appreciate your comment. Please don't make a comment like that again, or you and I have nothing else to talk about. That's the way you stand up for yourself. Okay. And if people do other things such as ghosting you or anything like that, that, you know, they ghost you goodbye. Good luck. All right. You don't need people like that or that are flakes in your life. All right. Because they're not respecting you. They're not respecting your time. There's absolutely no excuse for a ghoster. All right. No excuse. Not in today's age of technology where a text takes less than a minute. Absolutely no excuse. All right. So, you know, this is how you cut out these toxic people out of your life. And if you have to deal with, you know, toxic or narcissistic type of people in your life, maybe it's uh, family members or maybe you're married to somebody you can't leave or something. The way you do it is you stand your ground. You're stern. You don't sway in your opinion. You believe in what you're saying. You don't doubt yourself. Okay. Okay. And this is how you stand up for yourself. So I hope that helps you guys. If it did, please hit the subscribe button and please share, share, share the podcast and have a great day.
If you're having trouble in your relationship, or maybe you're dealing with somebody who's a narcissist, and you're really confused, you don't know what to do, you need some advice or some clarity, well, I offer email and also phone coaching. Please go to the podcast description for the link on how to get email or phone coaching, or maybe you just have a question that you need answered. All questions will be answered confidentially. So go to the podcast description where it tells you how Yaz can answer your questions. Hi, you guys, it's Yaz, and I want to tell you about my two books on Amazon. The first book is Regain Your Power. It's all about power and relationship. Who has the power in the relationship? And it goes into all of that, okay? The other book is Signs He's Not Into You, He's Wasting Your Time, okay? Check it out. It gives you a lot of good clues as to whether you're with somebody who's a real one or somebody who's just going to waste your time. You could read them both with Kindle's free trial membership. So check it out. Link is in the podcast description. Hi, you guys. I just want to make you aware that the Game Exposed podcast now has their merchandise available. You can check out the link in the podcast description. There's hoodies, there's sweatpants, there's t-shirts, there's cool hats. So go check it out. Link is in the podcast description. And follow Yaz on Instagram at dating underscore advice underscore Yaz.